This is Randy Shannon. Welcome everybody with another edition of Awakened Nation with Brad Salas. A huge shift is taking place on planet Earth. People seem to be waking up. Tired of the way things used to be, they are creating something brand new and changing the world we live in. My name is Brad Zalas, and I get to sit down with the next generation of idea makers, the disruptors, and the game changers. Everyday people, just like you and me, from all over, who are doing amazing things. Welcome to Awakened Nation. Hey, everybody. I've been trying to get on uh, my good friend, Randy Shannon. She's a doctor of naturopathic medicine. And um, I, I got to tell you, Randy, uh, I tested you when we first met because I wanted to make sure you knew what you were talking about because mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of my hobby. So uh, everybody who's listening, get a pen, get some paper. We're going to be talking about um, Healing the Body, uh, her website, the body can dot com which means the body can heal the body can heal yes, itself it can. uh if it gets the right nutrition and um randy are you excited to be on the show i'm very excited i've been waiting this is like a two year in the works uh ordeal so i've been waiting for this i'm really excited that you know i'm finally on one of your shows and and in action here with you very exciting awesome well i'm going to read your bio randy shannon a doctor of naturopathy and uh, specializes in face tongue nail analysis which is known as original medicine founder of the body can.com founder of the body can.com a natural doctor her specialties are the 800 plus so-called incurables. She is an expert with the ancient face nail tongue analysis. Um, and by the way, Dr. Randy's uh, clients come to her from all over the world. And I can attest to this. I'm one of them, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, Randy. Thanks for being on. Thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. We've got so much to talk about. And it is 5,000 year old original medicine. So we didn't have back then what the MDs have today. And I actually like this far more. I do love the MDs for emergency type of situations. Right. Uh, of course, that's, that's, I, I have some experience in that field, but not surgeries and things like that. There are some little tricks of the trade to stop bleeding immediately and, right. you know, life saving situations. But, we have a, I feel like the MDs have their place, but I do not feel like it's in anything where we're dealing with something chronic. I think the naturopathic doctors are the first place somebody should go. And most people are unaware. If I tell somebody I'm a naturopathic doctor, they're like, oh, what is that? I've never heard of that before. Wow. Yeah. And I can't believe that's never been taught. It should have been taught in schools. Uh, why do we only hear one way, one track? It's not right. Well, you know, this is really interesting because uh, I grew up, my father being a chiropractor, I grew up with natural medicine in the house immediately. And I've seen chiropractic do like jaw dropping things to me personally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and my best friend, his father lived across the street and he was a general practitioner and he had his own office in the house and there was a place for him as well. So I had a very good balance between the two modalities. Mm -hmm. But through the years, I've done my own research and I've done my own testing and I've done a lot of things. And you are right. Before we had modern medicine and machines and all this other stuff, people could heal like major diseases through herbs, through food. Uh, everything you put in your mouth, by the way, unless it's meat, uh, is an herb. You know, if it's a vegetable, it's an herb. And if you go back to ancient China or Japan, they know which herb heals which organ or which disease. That's um, right. And, and this, this I find fascinating. And the work that you do, we got a chance. You got a picture of this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Randy came out to Vegas, and uh, <laughs> I found out by accident she was here. And because uh, I saw her post something on Facebook, and I went, hey, are you in Vegas? And she's <laughs> like, yeah. And it turned out we were 70 feet away from each other. Mm -hmm. And what happened is... Uh, we contacted each other and we went hiking. And if you've ever been up to, uh, you know, Red Rock and the Calico Basin, uh, I got a chance to pick her brain while we were hiking a little bit. And one of the things, Randy, and you can talk about this and the ladies are all going to be jealous and we're going to go into why I'm not just going to ask you this question and point things out. We're mm -hmm. going to go. Why? I asked you if you dyed your hair and you said, no, mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. 
yeah, even my friends that, you know, will sit next to me at dinner every single day. Uh, I remember having a conversation and I, I said, oh, I need to go see my hairdresser. I haven't seen him in almost a year. And she was just absolutely floored. She was in her 30s. <clears throat> and she said, you don't color your hair? And I said, no, absolutely not. And the reason that I don't do that is because, you know, I'm as blonde today as I was when I was a little kid. Maybe I was a teeny bit blonder then, but um, my hair stays this color. I'm 53 years of age. I'm not afraid to hide it. Uh, my hair stays this color because I'm putting the right nutrition into the body. When you start to see white hair or silver hair or varicose veins or hemorrhoids, which are just varicose veins in a funny spot, um, then you've got some issues. You have deficiencies in the body and you most likely have uh, absorption issues as well. If you, yeah, and I'll, I'll, we'll go into that. But, you know, if you're eating the wrong things, you're blocking your absorption and you're probably at 2% or less. And if you eliminate certain things, then your absorption will go up to about 98%. Right. And, and I'm living proof of this as well, because you got me on a regimen a little bit uh, to rejuvenate myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm almost 60, for those of you who are interested as well in rejuvenation and staying youthful. Uh, I remember living in New York years and years ago, and my hair was really dark. It wasn't actually blonde, and it was getting darker. Um, but then I came out here and I started eating better and taking care of myself. No fast food, no soda, none of that stuff. Eating pure, uh, drinking wa pure water, 70% organic. You know, I wasn't perfect. I would cheat once in a while, but you got me on a regimen and my original hair color from when I was younger just returned naturally. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, that's impossible. You know, well, I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, but some of the things we attribute to getting old are not uh, about getting old. They're about uh, nutritional deficiencies. And we're going to go into that right now. How did you, first of all, I want to, I want to ask Randy, how did you learn this? Where did you learn it from your mentors, your training? Um, it's your floor right now. And I want everybody to take notes because um, it's, it's just simple adjustments that can change your whole life. Am I right? Yeah, it's true. Well, my first real encounter with the natural type of, you know, platform for medicine, when I was a little kid, I was getting some UTI infections. And so, you know, I kept, my parents were, you know, taking me to the doctor, they put me on antibiotic. Well, one time we were out of state, we went to a different doctor and he said, stick out your tongue. I was probably like nine or 10 years of age. And I figured right. it popsicle stick was about to go over my tongue again. He was going to look at my tonsils, something like that. And uh, no, in fact, he actually looked at my tongue and he was looking at the, the digestive area and uh, probably other things as well. I just didn't know it at the time. And he said to my mom, is she getting a lot of sugars, et cetera? He asked her a line of questions. And after that, from about the age of nine, maybe 10, all sugars pretty much were eliminated from my diet. So what were they back then? Popsicles, loved popsicles. Soda pop was like a big deal when I was a little kid. No, yeah. Still in the industry. Uh, every time I went to grandma's, um, they had this humongous sugar bowl. And I would just dip into that because I didn't have that at home. It was just like one candy after another, whatever my grandfather's flavor of the the week was, and that stuff was always there and it was always around. Of course, we were raised up on Wonder Bread, um, you know, just probably a lot of really Crisco oil, uh, you know, all these really bad things. And once, once the sugars were eliminated, then I never had a UTI ever again for the rest of my life. So that was our, always in the back of my mind. And, and then just over time, I was a big entrepreneur. I did a lot of things, a lot of different fields, and I was just never really satisfied. I, I knew I hadn't found what it was that I loved. I hadn't found a passion yet. So, you know, I had some college behind me and uh, went through some life changes. First husband passed away. Uh, the second one, we just, you know, parted ways. And so, you know, through all of that in life, you like reevaluate and try to figure out what's the most important thing to you. And it always was health and nutrition. And when I was uh, maybe 16 or so, I had put on a bunch of weight and 
went to some aerobic classes after about a year of having that weight on me and learned a better way to eat and to live and, you know, exercise and how it's healthy, etc. So did all of those things. And once I took that weight off, it never went back on. I fluctuated here and there, you know, after children or whatever, because I do have four sons, but my journey just continued. And, and one day I ran into a doctor that just absolutely wowed me and he will be on a future show. Uh, but that is probably what the main trigger point was. And I decided that's it. That's the road I'm going to go down. And I put myself uh, back in, well, I was in my 40s and I went back to school and became a naturopathic doctor. So it's never too late and we have a long way to go. And I will say I was fairly healthy through all of those years, eliminating some things. But, you know, I, I ate plenty of Oreo cookies, double stuffed. I loved them. Um, you know, there was a lot of things in my diet that I probably shouldn't have done, but I feel like I've rectified all of that and reversed all of that aging for sure. Uh, and you can reverse aging. I mean, I look at my family's genetics and by the way, you look like you just graduated. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, you know, you can reverse aging. And I, I noticed this in my great, I knew all my great grandparents when I was growing up. So this tells you my family has longevity. Mm-hmm. Um, my great uncle fought, uh, in world war two in the Navy at the battle of Midway and lived. And he went, he lived to be in his nineties as well. So, you know, I had, I had grandparents who were and great grandparents walking me around without aches and pains, just, you know, come on, Bradley, grab my arm and, and walking. And so I noticed if they have such a great genetic code, uh, also, uh, a lot of my family members look young despite being, you know, in their 60s, 70s. Um, people still hit on my great aunt or my aunt, my mother's sister. They, they still hit on my aunt because she looked so young. So I figured if I just took what you're teaching mm-hmm. and, and the products you recommend, and you did a tongue analysis for me, yes. um, I, I, I figure I'm, I'm going to live to at least be 120. So it is possible. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into this because I, w- I want you to talk about tongue analysis. Mm-hmm. But if you go into a store, folks, and your stuff that you're buying, if most of it's in a box, chances are it's a publicly held company and they put more money into the printing on the box and the label than they did on the actual product. And if you read the ingredients, there are poisons in there. Lots. Those pres- those preservatives that they put in there is to keep the food from, uh, you know, breaking down and sit on the shelf as long as possible. Now, think about this. And Randy, you can talk about this. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm on my soapbox. This is my favorite subject. Um, uh, the preservative they put in there, if it keeps the molecules and, and the enzymatic activity from breaking down so that it can sit on the shelf so they can make profit, bigger profit, longer extension of shelf life. Imagine when you eat it, what it's doing to your stomach, because what it does is it, it, it's keeping you from breaking it down in your stomach acid. And one of my big problems that Randy helped me with was this digestion. Mm-hmm. A lot of us aren't fat because we eat too much. We're eating too much because we can't digest. It's all, it's almost like that, that episode on Star Trek with the tribbles. The more you eat, the less you digest, the more you need to eat. And so uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's start with tongue analysis. You can break down and see where a person is sick based on the parameters or the quadrants on the tongue. Am I correct yeah. on that one? Yes. Yes. Talk, talk about this. this is okay. Fascinating. Let me, t- let me say a couple of things. First, I want to say the packaging and all of that, you know, is the, one of the most enticing things when somebody's going through a grocery store, even like, uh, Okay, so we touched on the hair. I want to say something about that. It's it's all in the packaging. It's all in, you know, the cell. The cell. Okay, so women all, all over, they have a thing against you know their hair changing, whatever. Although I think, like I've said, it can stay the same color forever. There was a guy, and I don't know his name, but I definitely um, heard the interview, and he was coming on the hair scene as big as like a Paul Mitchell, right. and. He took his students over to, you know, where the, 
uh, it, you can donate your body to science. So he took them to that side and they had a lot of cadavers there. And the cadavers had their heads cut open all the way to the skull bone. And the skull bone was the same color as whatever they were coloring their hair. Right. So, you know, you talked about digestion, but things going in this way, but it's everywhere. It's the skin, it's the scalp, it's, you know, this is the largest organ on our body, our skin. So what you're putting on it, you got to really watch it. So if you were dyeing your hair brown, your skull bone was brown. If it was blonde or red, whatever. And so that affected that man so much that he actually went a whole nother route for his career. So it's, and what you're putting inside your mouth. So the things that are in most every product out there are some of the most toxic things that we could be doing to our body. For example, wheat, barley, rye, and oats. No program on the planet is going to work if the person is eating wheat, barley, rye, or oats. And why do I say that? Because there's things in there that our bodies cannot break down and it goes through our system like a wrecking ball. And by the time it gets to the small intestine, where we are supposed to have these trillions of beautiful grass-like structures called villi, it's part of our body, it's part of our system. Well, when the byproduct that's in the wheat, bar barley, rye, and oats makes it to the small intestine, it just mows it down like, like a wrecking ball, okay? And when you don't have villi, that's where your absorption goes to 2% or less. That's why obesity is huge in this country and, and all over the world. Because like you said, they're just eating and eating and eating. And their brain is like, hey, I didn't get anything good. But it doesn't tell you that. It just says, I'm still hungry. And so people eat and eat. And there's nothing getting in except for calories. That's it. So you have to eliminate all wheat, barley, rye and oats. Well, then I get the argument, oh, I can't drink beer. Well, there's rice beers, there's sake. Just look for something that's not made from wheat, barley, rye, or oats. It does alter you a little bit, but trust me, when I get through this whole good and bad food list, you're, you're going to be like, wow, I could get fat on that list because you could. Um, but most people will drop weight naturally, and it takes about 12 to 14 days for the villi to start to grow back. And it takes months and months for them to fully grow back. But once they start, then you start absorbing again. And that's, that's a key. That's a secret. All these doctors all over the world and doing, you know, all these crazy, dangerous surgeries. All you have to do is just get rid of the wheat, barley, rye, and oats and do a few other things. But that's the main one that will start to heal the gut. And then the weight will start to fall off because things will start absorbing. This is astounding to me because I have seen in my life, uh, people don't, like you said at the beginning, people don't know what a natural path is. And I start cracking up because um, I had digestive issues. And um, you told me this. I, I had far more damage than I realized. Um, but you told me uh, on your protocol, it would take two and a half months for every year that I had this damage. And it was. GI mm -hmm. tract, it was thyroid, it was a bunch of other things. And it took about three to four months before I could physically see things really start to reverse. Mm -hmm. And and uh, this is the funniest part about Randy. She will make you send a picture of your tongue. I, I hope the maintenance men in my neighborhood didn't see me, but I would be out in the sunlight taking a picture of my tongue. Mm -hmm. um, and you could see that my digestive tract was healing. Yes. And as soon as it started to heal, I started losing weight. Mm -hmm. And this is the funniest thing, too. There are certain things that we eat every single day that are actually killing us, but yes. we're taught that they're healthy. And you have a list. Am I, am I correct on that one? Like, oh, yeah. don't, don't put these in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you want to talk about those? Yeah. So, um, well, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, which we said. Uh, no fried foods ever again for the rest of your life, okay? Um, no processed meats. So what's a processed meat? Uh, the salamis, bacon. I know bacon was all the rage. Everybody get bacon. But it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be nitrate free and nitrite free because those will slowly kill you. Um, no foods cooked in any oils. This is a biggie. Everybody argues this whoa, one. Whoa, wait a minute. 
wait a minute, what did you just say? No oils? Talk about no this. Yeah, the, the whole world wants to argue this one. Um, here's the thing. If you said, Dr. Randy, I want to use olive oil, coconut oil, I'm going to say fantastic if you're taking that coconut, you're mashing it down, and you're extracting the oil off of it, and you're eating it in the next 15 to 30 days, or 30 minutes, I'm sorry. And then it's fresh, then it's full of nutrients, and I'm all for it. However, if it's on a store shelf, I don't care how extra, extra virgin it is. I don't care how dark the bottle is. I don't care because it's in the whole process, it's exposed to oxygen. So it's oxidizing. And so it may not look rancid or taste rancid, but it is. It, and if you look at the bottle between the oil itself and the top of the lid, there's going to be air. So the whole time it's sitting on the shelf, through the processing, etc. by the time you start eating it, maybe it's in your house for 30, 60, 90 days, <clears throat> it is completely unhealthy. And what I start to see as a naturopath when people eat any of the oils, any of the oils, please don't argue it because it doesn't matter, <clears throat> underneath the tongue, your veins, which are really supposed to be fleshy colored, the tongue top and bottom should be fleshy colored. And so when on the underneath it's not, and I see the blue to purple to black, so it went from fleshy color, which was healthy, to blue, purple, or black, that is, oh, it could be a number of things, but it's essentially the oils, okay? And they're blocking in the body, and they're causing all kinds of oxidative stress. And you're, you're not taking the gun to your head, so to speak, but you're doing it very slowly. You're killing yourself slowly. And it painfully. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, because the Mediterranean diet, which is a lot of olive oil, mm -hmm. has come across our desks all of a sudden. And you're saying that this is, this is not good because no. it's almost like putting petroleum products in your body. Mm -hmm. Somebody else that, you know, may be watching this that's doing uh, the Gundry. I mean, Dr. Gundry would argue with me. That's okay. I can argue with him as well. And I am totally not for him saying to eliminate certain things. And then uh, it's my understanding, because I've had a lot of Gundry people come to me that are still very sick and they end up being, you know, heart clients. Um, from my understanding, he says to, to drink this olive oil every single night. And it's, it's no. It's, the answer is absolutely no. No. What do you change that with? Wow. Butter, it right? Yeah, it was never the apple a day that kept the doctor away. It was butter. A stick of butter a day keeps the doctor away. I love it. Yeah, you know, I, I'm one of these people that back in the 80s, I heard pasta is good for you. So I started making pasta. I'm thinking, I'm eating healthy. <laughs> okay, you know, you laugh. I know because you know where this is going. <laughs> I started to gain weight. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, yeah, no, I lie. Pasta is used by runners uh, to carb load. Because mm -hmm. it carries uh, two molecules of water and one molecule of glycogen when mm -hmm. you, after it's digested and it goes into your system. And that gives you that stored calories. Well, when I was taking jujitsu, I started to not use carbohydrates, simplex carbohydrates, by the way, folks. There is a difference. Rice, pasta, potatoes, those are simplex carbohydrates. In other words, they're just, they're almost starch. There's only two or three molecules of something in there, and that's it. Broccoli, on the other hand, is complex carbohydrates, which has all the nutrition in it that you would need. So I switched from eating a bagel for energy, pasta, all this, to just meat and vegetables. And everybody thought, oh, man, you're going to have no energy. Well, I took my black belt exam. I trained five days a week. I was never tired because I got off that carb addiction, that carb, that need for um, these things. And I also went back to, I, I started to say, well, why am I gaining weight? I wasn't really sure about the, the digestion stuff at that time yet. And, but I started to realize the way I ate as a kid was actually healthier than all this trendy crap I was listening to and thought I knew. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you eat flaxseed, Ooh, I'm healthy. Well, flaxseed lowers your testosterone and raises your estrogen. Ta-da. Um, if you eat certain oils, you know, we were all talking, oh, canola, vegetable oil, those are, they're not healthy at all. You were now yeah. finding out they're killing people. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know what? Screw it. And I put butter in everything yeah. and I felt better. Um, also, I had somebody who told me years ago, didn't know anything about the science of all this. 
she just said, I think butter gives us lubrication in our body that we can't get anywhere else. You know, it just makes things move better. Mm -hmm. Um, and a, you can't use margarine. They've done a, a, an amazing job at propaganda when these unhealthy products are being pushed on us. They spend all this money trying to tell you that the science is wrong. This is healthy. Uh, and it's just not. They're just all they care about, folks, is selling you a product. Um, you know, things like cornstarch or, you know, high fructose corn syrup. Um People didn't have to worry so much about their weight in the 70s because they were putting pure cane sugar into things. And they switched to, you know, high fructose corn starch or corn syrup, and everybody started gaining weight. You know, all of our health drinks, our, our, our workout drinks, our sports drinks contain that. Uh, you know, so let's, let's dig deeper into this because you, you still have a, the rest to go on the list. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get off track of them. So, fry, uh, well, first of all, butter. Just let me just clarify on the butter, um, because one of the, one of the things I said is no fried foods ever again for the rest of your life. Um, you know, we've looked at places where they eat a lot of fried foods, and they are some of the most unhealthy people, and the, the highest cancer rates. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you cook, when you fry something. You're cooking at such a high heat that it becomes carcinogenic, so cancer-causing. So if you cook something like, say, an egg, which I'm a humongous advocate of eggs, it's one of the best ways to get protein and uh, cholesterol. The body needs a lot of cholesterol. The doctors all say you don't, you know, they put you on cholesterol-lowering meds. And in fact, um, if you start to get dopey or loopy. Uh, you know, or dementias or Alzheimer's, those, the brain needs 75 per, or it's made up of 75% good cholesterol. So when the doctors all said, you know, stop eating the yolk of the egg, huh? like dementias all went off, off the charts. We need lots of good cholesterol. The, the male and female anatomy is made up of about 95% cholesterol. So we have to have that. So I eat a lot of eggs cook them on a low heat butter. If it starts to do that snap crackle, I'm frying it now. And now I'm turning that and it becomes carcinogenic. So you want to keep it low heat butter. Uh, eggs are in the in my, my good list. And you can eat two to three eggs a day, two to three times a day. Um, eggs, that runny, runny yolk is so critically important. The whole egg is very healthy. And if you are a, you know, a, a vegan or whatever, and you don't want to you know, you can pick out the, the part that you don't like and still get all the yolk and the white. That was never the part. Yeah. So, um, so no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, no fried foods ever again. Uh, no processed meats, no foods cooked in any oils ever. And there's some, some other things. I'm actually revamping my list. Um, you need to completely eliminate carbonated beverages. Uh, there was a study that came out. And Dr. Wallach and I have talked about this at length. Uh, it said that carbonated uh, anything, carbonated drinks, you know, the, the seltzer waters and, you know, the champagnes, whatever, all that carbonation is cutting the life in half. And if you think about it, the cells need oxygen and therefore you're, you're putting in the CO2. Well, no wonder it cuts your life in half. You're cutting off your oxygen source in a way. Um, and, and, uh, Dr. Mercola, by the way, came out with a study, and if anybody has the video, I would love to see it because I, I saw it when he did it live, and uh, maybe when everything was forcibly scrubbed on his side, that video disappeared, but basically he was in an interview, and he stated that there was a study, and it was a fresh study, and it talked about the oils in the body, and it said that they stay in the body for about seven and a half years. Half yeah. years? It's sludge. It's pure sludge. And, it, you know, what I see is a lot of heart issues, a lot of people with heart issues and liver issues. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a mind blowing because uh, if you think about it, yeah, oils are not natural substances. If you knew what it takes to make one olive, you know, to get it off the tree, because they don't just drop and look like that. Uh, they have to be soaked for weeks and, you know, they have to actually make them happen and then to grind them up into oil. Um, wow, this is, this is powerful. Um, yeah. I know that when I switched and shut the hell up and listened to Randy, <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, I could, I could actually feel myself getting healthier. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the funny, it's a funny thing, but I'm one of those rare people. I pay attention. Like if I get up, I, I, I almost ask myself every day on a scale of one to 10, how am I feeling today? And sometimes I'm a nine. And if I'm a nine, I ask myself what it is. Did I poop yesterday? Did I drink enough water? Did I eat too much, uh, you know, ice cream or whatever, uh, sugar and things like that. And, and I'm one of those people. There's a lot of people out there who aren't that at all. They wouldn't even know. They're listening to us and going, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm going to eat my whatever and I'm going to live fine. I'm going to, I'm going to die happy. Um, yeah. Well, I, you'll die early. Uh, I watched my dad die horribly, mm -hmm. suffer. So, yeah. uh, you don't really want to do that. <laughs> you might want to listen today. So, you know, when I first saw you in person, Brad, you know, I didn't, I didn't know you the way you are today. But when I look at the the photo of you back then versus the photo of you today, you're a completely different person. You have your vitality back. You have your life yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a very weird moment in my life. Um, I had gotten a divorce. I had moved to Las Vegas. I had been out here. And like I said before, my family doesn't age like other families. We all have a genetic uh, propensity in our families. You can either enhance it or eliminate it. Um, David Benzikin, he was forced to become a vegan because his entire family, their blood type does not react well to meat and everything else. So all these, um, what they would call genetic problems, you know, family <laughs> genetics, um, which I don't believe in, but um, he... Uh, became a vegan and all those health issues went away. They just disappeared in him. And so he's making a change in his family. And from that moment on, it's all going to shift mm -hmm. for me. Uh, and this is why I'm bringing this up. When I came out here, uh, I looked old. I was getting older looking. Okay. I was looking my age. And for me, I was panicking because I was like, that shouldn't be, it just <laughs> should not be for my family. Um, you know, the way we are. And mm -hmm. so I started exercising and getting sun and I started, um, uh, I did a kidney flush and a liver flush and did different things. And then I met you and, uh, you know, you really helped me reverse, uh, a lot of it. And if I showed you for the, you've seen the pictures, but mm -hmm. for some people, if I show them what I looked like three or four years ago, it looks like I should look 20 years from now. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, you helped to reverse a, a lot of things. Um, uh, and, and I got to, uh, you know, tell everybody, how can they get a hold of you if they need to get a hold of you, Randy? Where do I'm they... all over the place, really. But the website is the body can and if it's the body com. And if somebody wants to schedule, it's just forward slash schedule. So the body can is in the body can heal itself. Um, and then I'm on Instagram, Instagram.com forward slash the body can same on YouTube, YouTube.com forward slash the body can. I keep it really simple. And then there's a couple of Facebook groups. You have to search for them because, uh, you know, with the censorship and things that are going on today, um, yeah. sadly, uh, when anybody posts anything about the event that's going on around the world right now. Uh, yeah. That yeah. thing they're trying my to stick us with. Yeah. <laughs> so I get my hand slapped on my page and I get punished. So sometimes you can't find it when you're searching, but it's Facebook dot com forward slash groups forward slash the body can and uh there's like three simple questions there even if you don't answer them i look at every single profile before i accept you in uh, just trying to make sure that i keep the the group clean and um no scammers and nobody's allowed to just you know do a big sales pitch in there it's it's literally information swapping there's files and everything else my credentials are there uh, showing my school and my, you know, my uh, diplomas, et cetera. So uh, just to make everybody uh, aware of what I do know. And, and, you know, Brad, after I got out of school, well, while I was in school, that's where I found that I really had, you know, I was good at it, looking at the face, the nails, and the tongue. And right. um, ironically, I have fingernail polish on. But this is the first time I've had it on, and I'm not joking. Five or six years because I had an up on Friday um, and I decided to, to do it up. But I don't put anything on my skin to speak of, you know, some uh, various oils that are just very good for the skin. And when I after I just got done saying no oils ever, 
Um, these are essential oils, so they're a different base. It's not like a coconut oil. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit different. And even that I don't do very often. Um, I think sunlight is huge, uh, and I really implore people to get out into the sun, especially going into this winter, uh, you know, with so many people that have been vaccinated and a, a depletion of vitamin D is never good for the body. So, and then I, if you're near an ocean, uh, where you can just go and ground out and just get in that salt water and, get, you know, just pull that energy off of that, there is energy in there. Um, I try to go every week or every couple of weeks and I'm only a few miles from it, but to actually go and find a few hours just to just sit and shut off the phone and shut up all the electricity and, you know, just recharge. That's important. Uh, yeah, it is kind of interesting that people uh, living in Las Vegas is the funniest part. I never realized how sick people were until this pandemic began. Mm -hmm. And I literally saw people getting out of the car to go to restaurants and it looked like they've never been in the sun in their lives. Right. And they were so white, you know, porcelain white, that you could see the veins under their skin. Mm -hmm. They didn't have varicose veins. You could just see the, the dark vein near the surface. They had never been in the sun. And it's because some of you out there listen to every single piece of propaganda that's sent yeah. out health-wise. They go, oh, pasta is healthy. You start eating pasta and you gain weight and you can't figure out why. They say, don't go in the sunlight. And then you can't figure out why you get sick and you get the cold. And it's very easy for you to get sick all the time. Mm -hmm. um, we're, you know, in 250,000 years, suddenly the sun is dangerous. Are you, yeah. are you serious? Yeah. It, it blows my mind. Yeah. I, I don't know why people just, they listen without thinking. And by the way, if you look at any of the suntan oils or lotions or anything like that, the ingredients on them are carcinogenic. Yes. And people slather this on their skin thinking that this is going to protect them. When in reality, it is actually causing a lot of the problems because your, your skin absorbs things right through the skin. It also, you know, people don't realize i know i know a lot of people who never went in the sun and they're getting skin cancer and it's like and then you find out they're drinking diet coke all the time mm -hmm. and there was a study that came out years ago that the number one ingredient that makes it sweet is aspartame aspartame was invented in a lab to eat up poop you know they they would dump it into cesspools and sewage systems so it would eat it up so it's a man-made organism Mm -hmm. And the byproduct of that organism, when it when it poops, okay, it, that fecal matter is where aspartame came from, a sweetener that that you know this is what you're eating, and they say this is the miracle <laughs> sweetener. Well, oh. it, it, the study actually said it, it the aspartame anything that has aspartame in it is the leading cause of cancer out there. Now try finding that study again. You know, these things disappear off the web really fast, don't yes, they? they? They do. It's unbelievable that people actually do still put those pink, yellow, and blue packets into their coffees or, you know, sprinkled on their fruits. Right. And, I, I, you know, when I had, well, I have four sons. And when one of them was in junior high, I remember him reaching for one of those. And I said, absolutely not. And apparently they were giving it out in the school system. So, you know, I'm not a big advocate for the school system. Um, I've homeschooled most of my sons. They're all grown up and just amazing young men. Uh, but I remember one of them coming home one day, and because I hadn't thrown something into the recycle, I got the big what for business and that the whole world was coming down because of me. And uh, now they're 25. They understand different. But it was just kind of an interesting conversation that day about, why the world's really coming down. So yeah. we just, nah, there's an indoctrination that. going on and it, it's not of the good things. It's, it's no. like, why didn't they teach how to, how to grow a garden, how to grow your food, how to, um, you know, do, do things with your hands and why is college every, I could just go on down that road forever, but yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, you and I are of like mind. We know that, um, uh, the next generation has been indoctrinated through marketing, not yes. science. They've yeah. been indoctrinated into you're selfish. If you believe in freedom and your family and taking care yeah. of yourself, we need to worry about people on the other side of the world. Give us your money. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, this is going on. Or if you own a gun, you're some sort of crazy, you know, person. And so we, we have an entire generation that's been taught that boomers are evil. Mm -hmm. We cause the economic collapse all over the world. Uh, we're the reason poor people are poor. Let's see what else can I let's. Oh, we cause uh, climate change or global warming. Uh, mm -hmm. We destroyed the economy. What else? All these myths they've been taught because they don't want you to point the finger at the actual cause of yeah. what's going on. So it's easy to blame the mm -hmm. obvious, you know, my generation. But um, the reality is uh, I might do a show on uh, re-educating everybody on what is the actual cause. Um, yeah. But anyways, let's get back. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? You know, because there's more things that you shouldn't put in your body. Um, but I also want to ask you, when you look at someone's tongue or fingernails or whatever, what <laughs> are you looking for? Because honestly, if I went to a Western doctor right now, mm -hmm. he would, you know, check my tongue. He'd, he'd do my reflex. You know, he'd hit the hammer on my knee. He would, uh, you know, make me breathe into a tube and maybe do a stress test. And he'd go, ah, get out of here. You're doing great. But if <laughs> I went to you, you were like, oh, Brad, you have liver issues here. Yeah. It looks like your GI tract needs some work. Your thyroid shot. Uh, your male endocrine system needs an upgrade. Oh my God. I wouldn't be able to walk out because with naturopathic medicine, I can't get away with bullshitting myself. Okay. That's if I'm not right. drinking enough water, you'll see it. If I'm not taking care of my body, you'll see it. If I'm eating oils, you'll see it. Yes. What are you looking at is what okay. I really want to get at. And this is my passion. This is what I do. And, and I'm, I'm just very good at what I do. I love, love, love this field. So when I'm looking at a tongue, like for example, you, I just said, Brad, stick your tongue out and uh, you stuck your tongue out. I'm looking for cracks. I'm looking for discolorations. Remember I said it's supposed to be fleshy colored. Right. And bottom. So I'm looking for any little spots all over the tongue. I'm looking for a mirror like coloring that could be, you know, anywhere. It's, it's more of a texture. It's very glossy, very shiny, very wet looking. Uh, I'm looking for those types of things and I'm looking to see where those things show up. Um, so the tongue has different meridians. For example, the edges are liver, gallbladder. In the center, you have the digestive area. Uh, just in front of that on the top, you have the lungs. In front of that on the top, you have the heart. In the very back, you have kidney. Uh, bladder. Uh, so all of these things will show up there. And then underneath, whenever I see those discolorations, uh, they're typically liver or heart, or they could be a heavy metal toxicity. So, you know, I'm looking to get straight to the root cause. And then when somebody, that's just a tongue analysis only. Typically somebody will get me on the phone uh, with that one for anywhere between 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, then when I do a, a full analysis, I'm actually looking at the fingernails. If, if a woman has polish on, it's got to go um, because I need to see what's going on there for all my life. You know, I, I can count on one hand how many times I actually put polish on my nails. But uh, so all my life, I've been able to look at my nails. I can see if there's spots. Uh, I can feel if there's ridges. Um, there's, you know, like a hairline, black line going across the nail uh, typically indicates internal bleeding. So if you've got polish on, you can't see that. If uh, people are getting injections and fillers and Botox and all of that, you can't see that. Yeah. So the body is screaming out, hey, there's something wrong with you and I need help. And you can't see it. So on the face, for example, uh, underneath of the eyes, if it's discolored, uh, typically it's liver related. If it's puffy, then it's kidney related. I can see the heart. I can see the liver lines, the pancreas, the spleen, the reproductive system. Um, you know, smile, smile lines. Everybody goes and gets Botox for the smile lines. Um, that's not what I do. When, when <clears throat> you're getting the Botox, you're just band-aiding it. But when you actually internally feed the body what it needs, yeah, you're still going to get them because, you know, we're getting older and it just happens. But I've, you can see them on 20-year-olds. But it's, it's a lack of nutrients. So if you do like a high-protein diet and you do 
And I'm not saying like a ridiculous high because there is a certain point where, you know, then it's a problem. Right. But a protein, nice protein diet, eliminating all of the bad things, putting in the good things and, you know, getting your collagen. Uh, and then there's certain things out there that are, that are, you know, for bone, joint, cartilage, ligament, tendon. And I take those things every single day just to keep everything up, to keep a nice jawline, you know. I exercise, so I'm, I'm getting that, but I want it to happen naturally from what I'm putting inside. You know, you, you did this with me. Like, you, uh, you monitored my tongue for about six months. And, yeah. and we're ongoing with this because I'm, I'm getting back in the saddle with more of these. Because um, you have me taking a 99-nutrient bl mineral blend of essential nutrients that we need every day, essential minerals. Mm -hmm. um, because of the, the blue study and everything, we started to notice... Uh, certain people that lived longer and they, and here's the weird part about the blue study. They didn't include the places where people lived to be 110 and still ate meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. They, they kept them out of the study because it didn't fit their, you know, whatever agenda. Mm -hmm. But um, you were talking about Dr. Wallach before we started uh, and he realized there was stuff in the soil as yes. well that helped add to this. Mm -hmm. And I realized for myself, I started taking the 99 minerals a day and I took it, I think it took about six months and you wanted to see a picture of my face. And I said, I'm thinking, I just want to see a picture of my face. Well, the bags under my eyes and the long mm -hmm. my eyes went away and you were like, Oh, your liver's healing nicely. And this is happening nicely. So, <laughs> for those of you who don't know this, and this goes back to ancient Chinese medicine and acupuncture when uh, the AMA was formed, the American Medical Association, there was only one Eastern modality that they approved right away, and that was acupuncture because mm -hmm. it worked. They fought chiropractic. They fought herbs, even though most pharmaceutical companies started out as herbal companies. They fought everything for 100 years until now. Now insurance covers chiropractic and stuff like that. But these modalities that come from ancient China, they originally started because the emperor wanted to get his troops back on the battlefield as quickly as possible. So acupuncture, the right herbs, the right minerals, um, getting those pressure points, looking at, at the, the, the different areas so that you know where a person is sick. You know, mm -hmm. um, My naturopath in New York for many, many years, uh, Iran Josan, he was from Eastern Africa. He would do iridology, which is the science of using the parameters of the eyes to figure out which organs were messed up based on bloodshot, you know, in, mm -hmm. the, in the eyes. And then he would confirm it with reflexology. So he would touch that pressure point where the liver was bad in my eye and then check it in the bottom of my feet. And I usually scream. Uh, <laughs> and so, and Randy uses the tongue and fingernails. Um, also as another modality, um, mm -hmm. every part of our body that has an organ aligns back up with the spinal column and that nerve ending also runs to the ends of our fingers, the ends of our tongue, our eyes, and the bottoms of our feet. So mm -hmm. you can confirm which organs have a problem just by hitting that pressure point for that particular meridian. The, so I'm just explaining it for our guests uh, or for our audience so that they understand this isn't some sort of, you know, uh, voodoo stuff. You're actually using the systems within the body and where those train tracks, those nerve systems and blood systems end in these different areas. And you can figure out, you can tell a person right away that, well, you've been eating too much cheese or alcohol. You know, it's showing up in the liver, the kidneys, things wow. like this. Your diet has too much protein in it because the kidneys aren't working properly. Um, and I love what you do. I really do. I really thank you, by the way, <laughs> for all that you do. Well, you know, um, you were saying 99 minerals. I just want to clarify it. It's actually 60 minerals, uh, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two to three essential fatty acids. That's what the body has to have every single day to function optimally. Um, do I do additionals? Absolutely. Did I have you do additionals? Yes. Hell yeah. When, yeah. When I look at the face, tongue and nail analysis, I'm going laser focus in and you're telling me what's wrong with you, but I also see what I see and double, triple confirm because face, tongue and nails. And then I also ask, actually ask for, um, if there's any marks of concern in the body, for example, moles or varicose veins, if there is, I want pictures of them. 
Um, I, I have a, a, a client that came to me and she said, I don't know what's going on with me. I have these cherry moles all over my, my abdomen. And I keep going to a dermatologist and twice now they froze them all off and then they would just come back even more the next time. And now they're back again and I don't know what to do about it. And um, when you have moles that are cherry in color and they're coming in on the abdomen, that's, that's something very serious. A dermatologist should never be freezing those off. That's the body saying, I've got something serious wrong. And, you know, it could be ovarian cancer, uh, probably female, you know, organ related. If they, if they show up around the scalp, um, you know, it could have something to do with uh, an aneurysm. When you have varicose veins, like I said, they, they um, or hemorrhoids that are just varicose veins in a funny spot, those are little mini aneurysms and they are not to be ignored. So when you have them uh, or uh, migraine headaches, uh, the hair is already going white or silver, uh, you're running the risk, you're showing all the signs of an aneurysm. And so, you know, doctors don't know that. A naturopathic knows that. Yeah. Uh, but most naturopaths don't even ask that whole line of questioning. You know, when you come to me, you're going to fill out a form and you're going to tell me, because I'm very specific in my questions. I know what I'm asking yeah. get right to the root. And then I put together a protocol with those 60 minerals, the 16 vitamins, uh, the 12 amino acids and the two to three essential fatty acids. But then if I see, for example, a white coating all over the tongue, I'm going to know that there's another uh, part of my protocol that you're going to, you're going to take because we need to get into the gut and knock that bad bacteria. And if that doesn't do it, then it's probably lung related. If it just kind of lingers around uh, for months and months, then, you know, we're going to look at some sort of a respiratory support. If I see a, a, a heart issue, for example, it can be redness in the tongue. It can be uh, a crack running through the heart meridian. If I see that, then I look on the underneath. If I see blockage there, then I look at the face. Uh, there's two lines that show up on the forehead in a very specific spot that are heart related. Yeah. And yeah, and there's only two things typically that are missing when somebody has what they call the widow maker. Um, and that's just, you know, you hear about it. The guy's going along in life, doing great. And all of a sudden he just drops dead of a heart issue. He was missing a vitamin or a trace mineral and the body doesn't make the trace minerals. We have to supplement with them. We have to. Yeah. <laughs> our, our body, our food supply in America is actually missing a lot of the essential nutrients that we actually need. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to point something out for those of you watching on video. When I used to do this with my forehead, you would see these big thick lines, almost like worms on mm -hmm. my forehead when I make the creases. Now I can't even get them to show up. So for those of you who want to get plastic surgery and Botox, you don't need it if you go on something like Randy's protocols because yeah. I don't I barely have the lines on my forehead now when I when I crunch up like that. You see? Mm -hmm. And it's sticking with it. Yeah. The, the protocols are typically 90 to 120 days. Some people take longer. If you want to reverse that that aging, then you're probably going to take a little bit longer and there's nothing wrong with that. I say it like this, Brad, to my clients. You drive a car, right? Most people say yes. Um, you put gas, spark plugs, windshield wipers, the fluids, the new battery, da 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 And the most important vehicle that you drive is this, this body. So why would you give it less maintenance than you give the car, but yet ask so much of it, and then get upset when you're sick? And then draw in everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm so sick. Take care of yourself. Be proactive and these things won't happen. You won't suffer. Somebody said, and I've seen this out there on the internet, but somebody actually wrote it to me. You're going to be so healthy, Randy. One day you'll be dying of nothing. You'll be laying in bed dying of nothing. I don't know what I'll die of, but you know, I'm trying to prevent all of the, the norms, all the top three. Well, uh, there are... People that they claim, if you Google this in uh, even Wikipedia, the oldest living person uh, is out of China. And uh, some of you are going to be shocked when you hear this, um, but it was like 229 years he lived. Mm -hmm. Now, this sounds crazy. It sounds conspiracy theory, blah, blah, blah. But if you go and you look him up, 
they actually have proof of where he's been, the businesses he ran, the documents he did. And <laughs> if you want to live, uh, you know, I'm not saying you're going to live to be 229. Yeah, that does sound crazy. Like, that's impossible. But what if you wanted to live to be 120? And you don't have to live to be 120 with osteoporosis and no. hunched over and pain. No, no, uh, no, no. The worst thing I ever have ever had is when people come up to me in my class reunions and they say, how do you deal with it? I go, deal with what? They go, you know, the knee pain. I go, uh, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I really don't. Or yeah. how do you deal with the hip issues? And, I, and I'm literally looking at it. You know, you know I do jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I'm literally looking at them going, oh, my God, what it, what is going on? And I'm immediately going into that. Mm -hmm. Gosh, we can solve this for them. So I, I want you to reach out to, to Randy and, and go to the body can. And I want you to book an appointment because she'll take a look at your tongue, tell you what you need to do, what protocols to get on, and how to eat better. And if you're getting older and you don't want to age and you're thinking, oh, maybe I should get plastic surgery for you know, my double chin or whatever. If you notice, both of us have decent jaw lines at our ages mm -hmm. is because we do these things. When you eliminate wheat, oat, barley, uh, what else? What's the other thing? Wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Rye and oats. When you no, eliminate food, that, no food cooked in any way. This goes away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your, your skin yeah. tightens up, your mm -hmm. hair color returns and your nails, your cuticles, your tendons, your, your bones, everything. Randy had me on 30 different things in order to heal me. And I was putting in a shake every day, yeah. drinking it, and it was delicious. And what happened is things started to come back. I could literally feel myself go back five years, 10 years, 15 years in age. I could actually feel it. Mm -hmm. So please reach out to her and make an appointment, book an appointment. Uh, and if you're worried about money, you know, she, she does a good job. She doesn't charge you an arm and a leg but it's worth every penny i gotta tell you it's worth every every penny that i put into this um thank you we we by the way we come to the lightning round of the show where i ask you questions <laughs> and we go a little deeper do you still have time for that yeah for sure absolutely all right uh, so i'm gonna ask you three questions oh boy they're designed to, to help get everybody to know you a little bit better so okay first question is and I probably know the answer to this, but uh, what is one thing about you uh, that a lot of people don't know about you? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I live in Miami and I do show like in my social media, a lot of like social life, but my life is actually way more tame than people would think because I live in Miami. I'm kind of the nerd of all of my group of friends. <laughs> and um, when I go out, I might have a glass of wine, but then the rest of the time I'm drinking water with fresh squeezed lemon. And uh, <clears throat> I go and hang out at certain places where it's kind of like the cheers of Miami, where you go in and everybody knows your name. And <clears throat> the bartenders will all say, do you want your regular? And my regular is hot tea with lemon and honey. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just like... Um, you know, I'm just a, a normal person down to earth. You know, sometimes I'll get on the phone with people that after they've heard me on a radio show or whatever, and they're like, I can't believe I got to you. But I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just yeah. normal, happy. Yeah, you it are is. very down to earth. When I took you around Las Vegas, you were just really like, hey, can I get a picture over here? And it's like, you look exciting, but you're, you're a nerd at heart. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really am. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, and, and you know, I have a lot in common, you know, going hiking and things like that in the, mm -hmm. the gun range. I always um, show you when I go over there. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, my second question is what is something you really, really are passionate about? Mm. Um, I'm passionate about our country and our freedom and not losing it. Yeah. Um, honor, loyalty, those, yeah. those are the things. It's not just one thing. Um, I probably would have been good in the George Washington days. I probably would have been, um, I don't know. I'm just more of an earthy kind of person. I, I really like going back to the earth and back to our roots. And I just, I really like goodness and honor and honesty. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's one thing you and I have in common. Um, I'm also a patriot. I hang out with other patriots. And I see where this country is going. Gary. Yeah. And, and um, this was a country where immigrants, I mean, look at my last name, okay? This is a country <laughs> where immigrants could come from anywhere in the world. Didn't matter your race, creed, or color. You had opportunities. And a lot of people nowadays, they've been taught this nonsense that this country is, you know, all kinds of things that are just not true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that if freedom is gone 50 years from now, 100 years from now, someone's going to discover books that are based on the truth of what this country was. It's not a great experiment, it is the way the whole world should operate. And that is, you have the freedom. To do what you do, uh, as long as it doesn't hurt other people. Mm-hmm. And you also have the freedom to create a business uh, and you have ownership, sovereignty for your own life and your own way of life. Mm-hmm. And this is why, you know, some people go, well, you can have that in other countries. Well, not, not really. Okay. This is why millions of people come to this country every year and stay. Mm-hmm. People don't realize a million people are led into the United States every year. Forget about the, the border situation. Mm-hmm. People come to this country to live because there's an opportunity here to become great. Yeah. My, my Hungarian grandfather started multiple businesses here and uh, thrived. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Um, now, some of us, our families have been here longer. Some of us, our families just got here. But this is what makes America unusual. You don't see this in Japan, this, this racial mixing, this this. The mixing of everybody has an opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're from Korea, Africa, Australia, Peru. When you get here, you can make something of yourself. And there is no other country on earth like this. That's why people are fighting to get yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So those of you who've been taught this myth that we're the evil, you know, empire, uh, you've been taught something that's not true. The people are the good. I think the government is out of control. But I think the people, the grounded people. Richard Mayberry says this. He says, you know, you can love your country and hate your government. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, I'm there. (laughs) uh, I I think we're going to have a new renaissance. Uh, You know, I'm hoping for it because, you know, I meet people of all walks of life, uh, black, Latino, white, you know, uh, Chinese, um, uh, Vietnamese, you know, people from everywhere. And they're starting to wake up to this new patriotism mm-hmm. that this, um, this is America and we are Americans and we're coming together. Um, and it's exciting to talk to someone else like you as well. Uh, <laughs> I have um, one last question. Okay. What would you like to be known for at the end of your life? When everybody looks back and maybe it's on your tombstone or maybe, you know, you want your epitaph. What do you, what do you want that to be? I think the main thing, and I I have it now in life, which is great, is that the four people that I love the most saw that I stood and did the right thing when, when the times came that I needed to. And who are those four people? My four sons. And as long as they continue to look at me in a, in a, in a high esteem, um, level that I'm happy. And that's, that's the most important thing to me because they see that I stand. They see that I took them out of school, uh, when I didn't agree with what they were getting taught. Uh, I took, I've taken stands my whole life and, you know, I used to, you know, there's the term black sheep and in a way I always felt like I was the black sheep. I left uh, the house and traveled the country and, uh, you know, had my sons and wasn't afraid to take them and travel with them and teach them and, um, you know, just, just have them be different from the world. Uh, I did, I did funny things that a lot of people won't do that are just, you know, I went through the grocery store line. If I had my kids with me, I would take, you know, the trashy magazines and just kind of turn them around so that my sons were protected from that. I never wanted them to think that, uh, the, the women, for example, that were on those magazines was what a real woman was. So, you know, they're all very grounded. They're all very grounded. And right. whether you even realize I did that kind of stuff or not, 
uh, you know, we don't have a television. I only still live with one. He's in his, you know, last months of school. Um, but when it was just me and them, the tele television was thrown out because I felt like it was leading everybody down a wrong path and nobody was active. And, you know, I was one of the, I don't, I, I don't have a television. I could care less. Don't feel like I'm missing anything. And I'm really living life. And, um, one time one of the boys, he had been traveling and, and he came back and visited and he said, mom, you know, you, you, um, haven't really done anything. You haven't experienced anything. And I spent the next 30 minutes because he hadn't been around. I spent the next 30 minutes of telling him everything I had done in the last year alone. And he's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I was totally wrong. <laughs> so I want them to know that I lived. I want the world to know that I lived. Uh, now I, I've had to cancel three trips to Europe. I just had to say no to a trip to Mexico because I refuse to be tested for something I'm not sick with. Yeah. Um, you know, so I take stands and I'm not willing to cave and uh, I'm willing to stand for other people. I've been speaking out and, um, you know, doing this for a lot of years, a lot of years, standing up for the little guy because, you know, we're all that. If you, if you weren't a criminal trying to make your way to the top the other way, then we're all, in, we're all equal in that sense. And, you know, just trying to make it in life and just have our little piece of happiness. Yeah. Ain't that the truth, sister? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, please reach out to Randy Shannon, uh, naturopath. Uh, go to The Body Can, C-A-N, The Body Can. Uh, and, you know, just look at what she's talking about. Start making these changes uh, and talk to her. Reach out to her and book an appointment, please. Uh, thank you, Randy, so much for finally, we finally get you on the show. Yay. And we didn't even talk about it all. We have so much more to talk about. <laughs> Let's do that on the next show. We'll talk about the, the more stuff on the, the next show. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Bye. And the Nation. Yay! <laughs> Hey, everybody, tune in next week for another great edition of Awakened Nation. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your favorite media platform. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for being a big part of the Awakened Nation movement. This is how you can help me and our extraordinary guests. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And let's grow this movement by word of mouth. Our success will be because of you. Thank you, and see you next week.